I'm Stephanie, I work with Samuel Hall, we're a think tank and social enterprise working on migration. Um, and I had the quantitative component of this uh, research project that has been discussed on this panel. So as was mentioned, it involves a large scale survey uh, across four countries, contrasting refugees in camps with refugees in cities in a nutshell. So the tool focuses on profiling, of course, along with a battery of indicators on well-being and livelihoods. And today um, I present some preliminary findings. Um, um, and I focus on the evidence from two countries, namely Kenya and Ethiopia. So um, we'd like to compare the well-being of refugees and the, lively, and the livelihoods of refugees in camps and cities. Um, but first we wanted to ascertain whether it even makes sense to compare these cohorts without further statistical analysis. In other words, are these groups even similar in profile? It's, it's, it's a relevant question, right? Because it's not a controlled experiment um, where refugees are randomly assigned to a city or a camp to live in. Um, rather, we suspect there's an element of agency, but how important is this element of agency? How important is the prison, the cage that's open only to the top that Michael was just talking about? Um, um, if there is agency, rich refugees choose to live where? So we're going to be talking about this a little bit today, and we'll, we'll look at some prelim preliminary analysis for livelihoods and well-being, contrasting the two settings. So just a brief reminder um, before we dive in um, of who you're talking about. So we interviewed 360, well, that was our sample target. I think we got a few more in each location. Displaced in two camps, the Dab camp in Kenya and Asaita camp in Ethiopia. And then in cities, we identified an urban cohort that was to the degree we could tell just from the statistics, comparable. So we, we um, interviewed Somalis in Eastleigh and Eritrean refugees in, um, in the Afar region in the town of Tamara Logia. Selection was random, based on geographic grid sampling, um, and then random selection of dwellings and, uh, and of household respondents. So to the extent we could ensure the sample interviews representative um, of the refugee population of the area. So what did we find out? So we found that, um, um, that agency is, is present. So it's not a perfectly, uh, you know, um, perfectly sealed cage, right? Um, more, more than we thought, more, more respondents than we thought actually told us they had a choice in coming to their location. Um, surprisingly, few said they had no choice. This then needs to be further explored in light of, you know, what was said in terms of the, the camp as prison. Who are camps a prison for and why? Whom do the cell doors open for is something we're going to look at later on. We then asked what the choice was based on. Safety, we found, was an important draw towards the camp. Aid was not as important a factor in decision making in favor of the camps as we had assumed. And employment was not as important a pull factor towards the city as we had thought. Uh, this, of course, then remains to be further faceted by profile. Some go to the city for work, but who? This is what we want to find out. Um, family, and, from family and social ties, on the other hand, are beyond dispute. Um, they're an important factor in location choice, particularly for those who go to the city. So in other words, perhaps one hypothesis might be that no one is an island and that you do not go to the city without a place to land. This is not unimportant for planning purposes. So um, we found that the uh, profiles of the two cohorts, um, you know, refugees from similar places in the city and in camps are not the same. Refugees in the city are younger, they're more likely to be single, they're better educated, they're healthier. Um, and in Kenya, at least, um, they've been in their current location for much less time, which would imply they're, they're more mobile, this is controlling for age. Um, regressions confirm this also, we find that uh, those uh, who arrived uh, um, who arrived in the country of asylum because of its existing networks, who arrived for seeking safety, who arrived to claim aid, or who simply had no choice or more likely to be in the camp. Um, all other things being equal. Those without UNHCR refugee status are more likely to be in the city. 
Um, <laughs> and, we, and we confirm, which was already shown in the cross tab, that poor health makes refugees more likely to live in a camp. So again, controlling for the rest of the profiles by gender, age, years and country, etc. We compare a few key indicators that were deemed relevant to well-being and to livelihoods um, um, between the, uh, the camp and the urban refugees. So unsurprisingly, urban refugees are much more likely to live in an apartment or a house. Um, they're, they're much more likely to consider their dwelling dignified. Actually, they, they, however, they're perhaps also unsurprisingly much more likely to struggle to pay rent. This is the case, especially in Nairobi. Refugees in camps are much more likely to get a crisis level in terms of food security than their urban peers. Um, and they're, they, they score much lower when it comes to um, water and sanitation. How about livelihoods then? Well, um, we confirm what we suspected in Kenya to some degree, refugees in, in the urban environment in, in um, Eastleigh are much more likely to have a job than their urban, uh, than their camp-based peers. Um, this is the case for both men and women. Um, in Ethiopia, this holds true only for men, and generally the, uh, those, the, the, the rates of having work are, are generally much lower. Um, so what determines whether you say as an interviewed individual that you have a source of income right now? Well, we, we're looking at, uh, at a few regressions here. Um, and for, uh, if you look at the left chart, so gender being single and location are significant predictors of having a source of income at the individual level. The light blue is, is the most significant. So being in a city is highly significant and positive. Um, if, if, we, if we move away from the individual to the household level, um, we again see that um, um, if you're in an urban location, you're much more likely to be able to cover your household expenses from income from work. Um, you see that uh, some of the other factors here that are, that are lower on, you see that if you don't have a dignified shelter, if you're single, um, if you're dissatisfied with your schools, if you're female, you're less likely to state that your household is able to cover its, um, its expensive expenses from uh, income from work. Um, you, you're gonna see the internet pop up again. We're gonna, we're gonna have to investigate this further, but it is actually a, 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 an, an important predictor also of, uh, in, in, in terms of livelihoods. It, again, this is correlation, it's not causation. Perhaps if you have livelihoods, you're more likely to use the internet. Um, but it is, it is a correlation that stands out in the num on the number of funds. Um, so if we compare the mental well-being scale, we, um, we see that um, in Kenya, you're much more likely to have um, good mental well-being, at least on the scale, if you're in a city than if you're in a camp. This is true also in Ethiopia, though the, uh, the differences are less stark. Um, and uh, the, the qualitative interviews that were conducted by um, my colleagues in the different countries confirm this. Um, we have uh, we found out that the more dependent on our you are on aid, the uh, the less likely you are to to state that you <laughs> that you um, you have a high mental state of well being. Um, we had another interesting battery of questions about on life satisfactions and perceived prospects. Basically, how satisfied are you with your life overall? We get mixed results for current life satisfaction. Um, in Ethiopia, we find everybody scoring much higher in the cities than in camps. Um, this is not necessarily, however, the case in Kenya. Um, but the prospects, on the other hand, for the future generation are deemed much better in cities. So I found this result quite, quite stark and try to understand it a little bit better by looking at the determinants of expected future living standards of children. Which refugees are more likely to think their children's future is bright? 
or at least brighter than their own. Um, so as there was already, as, as we already saw before, being urban, being urban is definitely positive in this regard, but also being satisfied with your school. Dissatisfaction with public transport will, will mean you're less likely to feel good about your children's prospects. And again, this is controlling for the others. So if you're unhappy in the city, um, you're still less likely to be positive about the happiness of the future generation. Um, if, you're, if, you're, if you're not well connected in terms of public transport in the city, um, everything else being equal, you're, you're, um, you're less likely to feel good about the future prospects of your children, excuse me. So anyway, this is the kind of information that we hope can influence policy and planning later on. Um, we did confirm the hypothesis that um, access to infrastructure, access to, uh, to, to places where you can buy food, access to health, access to green spaces is much better in all the countries we've looked at thus far mm -hmm. in urban spaces than in camps. And we did confirm the hypothesis that this influences on well-being. Thank you, got two minutes. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm finishing this is my last slide, thank you. Um, so what are the next steps? Um, we're going to conduct more data and analysis on Afghanistan, where the cohort is slightly different and that it's IDPs and not refugees. We're going to collect more data in Jordan. We're going to design metrics for refugee well-being and refugee economic well-being. And uh, given how, given how diff different the cohorts are between um, camps and urban, we're going to have to do some you know, um, propensity score matching to make sure we compare refugees of the same profile in the two contexts. We are going to triangulate our quantitative findings with qualitative data and eventually engage municipal actors to foster local inclusion and basically inform pathways towards a more strategic urban response. And this is what I believe the, uh, the next presentation will go into in more detail. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>